So, welcome to Two Girls, a Guy, and a Tardis, episode 12. Hey, you did it! The one in, <laughs> the one in which I say it correctly. It's funny, because I was thinking that, too. I was like, hey, you got it right. <laughs> and it was pretty smooth, too. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Uh, we, uh, we're pr- pretty much going to get right into the story. Well, I think there's only one or two little things to talk about. <laughs> Apparently, Christmas came early for some North American <laughs> Doctor Who fans, because there was a glitch in the shipping system. And they have already received their Series 7B box sets, including the finale. <gasps> so what? if you want to find out a few spoilers or find out what happens, you could probably... It, it, first off, it's a lot harder than you think, because I looked online. People have been keep. I, I don't scour forums, though. They, um... It's been a lot harder to find, like, a spo- big-time spoilers. I found one. I won't say it. But if what they said is going to happen... If they if what they said is true, it sounds like, it sounds like the finale is going to be kick ass, or at least pretty good. I give it that. It, it definitely creative and something somewhat different. It did remind me though that did you hear that about uh, what Moffat said? Well, they said that if that, you yeah. if you do not reveal any spoilers, we will um, show you a clip from the anniversary of ten and eleven together. So I guess so people want to see that clip. I guess. Yeah. Well, how much can the clip show? I mean, come on! A clip is a clip. Spoil it. You know what? No. Like, call wow. him out. Call Moffat out. Okay, a clip is a clip. But you know, I mean, apparently, it, so it they... makes a difference. It's gonna his. It's gonna get people like, more excited for November. Well, I will say maybe it'll be their shoes again. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. It's, or it's gonna be the, the it's just a still image of when they had their scripts and they're standing next to each other. <laughs> it'll just be the two of them having standing like a, there having like a saying, sandwich. "Hey." How are you doing? It's a poorly photoshopped <laughs> image of the two of them from two separate episodes put together. No, but, you know, oh. but I'm impressed that, you know, first off, it was very hard for me. I, like, I took, like, three hours not looking for anything. Then I'm like, I, I got to see if it's out there. Not that mm-hmm. I wanted to know the whole thing, but because, you know, I have assumptions I made about what it's going to be and who Clara is and all this. So I kind of wanted to see if it lined up. And I really didn't find it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I said, I didn't look on... Most forum sites won't let you post them. They'll take them down. Because no what? one wants to wrath of the BBC. Oh, good. Yeah. What happened to freedom of speech? <laughs> it's funny how freedom <laughs> of speech... Right. Uh, it's funny how freedom of speech is okay when it's convenient for people. But when I want to be spoiled you know on something, John, I can't get it. <laughs> John, I... People... don't want to be spoiled. Well, if you don't want to be spoiled, it's going to say it's a spoiler. Don't read the thread. Sometimes people don't put spoiler tags or don't put... Um, well, that that is true. That's so. true. But the point is, I couldn't really find it, so I, I'm sure it's out there. I you know, I read something that hinted at a couple things that sounded kind of neat. I also read some rumors about the 50th that sound kind of cool, uh, about who John Hurt is. And uh, if they could pull it mm-hmm. off, it would be interesting of what they're going to do. I don't know if we should give that away on here or not, because we don't know if it's true, to be honest. You know, it could be almost anything. At but point. I know, like, I was just listening to some other podcasts, and, like, some of them, like, they don't mind. They'll talk about hearsay and rumors like we usually do. <laughs> then there's ones that are like, oh, no, we're not going to spoil it. We're not going to bring it up. It's like, oh, well, I don't know what side of the fence we are on on that. <laughs> because, I mean, I to me, it's not a big deal. Like, I watch stuff all the time after I've been told about it or whatever, and it doesn't bother me. Some people it does, and I appreciate that, you know, and it's, it's fine. So... I think I think we're like right on the fence of should we spoil <laughs> should we give the because is it really a spoiler if it's not confirmed that's the problem like we talk about episodes yeah. and we talk about the finale and what we'd like to see or what we think will happen we're just guessing what if one of us guessed correctly well was that a spoiler well no because <laughs> we didn't know you know so I don't know but like that- my thoughts on spoilers is like is if it's in video form then it's confirmed if it's written written text and it says let it it's not confirmed unless it unless it directly comes from the bbc yes like the like the photo like the photo nicole showed me today of (laughs) a close-up of clara and in the background you saw colin baker's doctor everyone i did i call out my friends showed it to me yesterday i nearly died when i saw it because it's kind of cool i said you can't miss him if that no (laughs) that's the one doctor he can be way in the background fuzzy not clear you see those colors on that coat you're like you could could take that image and replace waldo and everywhere's waldo book with him and it'd be easier to find (laughs) 
agree. Uh, I, I will say what I read and then seeing that image lines up together nicely, and I think it's going to be a pretty decent finale. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm sure there'll be some big, re- big friendly reset button at the end or something, though. <laughs> but um, also, I read uh, supposedly Moffat himself has confirmed there's a, se- a season eight, series eight for U- UK fans. We do have UK listeners. We have like mm-hmm. six. What? Yeah, feed burner. Hey. The, fe- the feed burner stats tells you where they're listening from. We have UK listeners, mm-hmm. and we have New Zealand listeners, which I'm guessing maybe my friend Henry, maybe I don't know. <laughs> he lives in New Zealand. Met him when we were down there. Great country if you've never been. Great people down there too. Uh, but so allegedly he um, he confirmed season eight. It's currently he said he's currently working on it. That came from Digital Spy. I don't know how reliable they are. Some people say they are. Other people hate them. I don't know. He also mm-hmm. said that he's amused when fans come up with their own theories about what's going to happen in the episodes and in the series, and then get mad at them, get mad at their own theories and blame Ma- and blame him. So That's awesome. that is funny. Mm-hmm. Which I would agree with him. And you know, he was specifically speaking about the fiftieth, and he said, you know, the only way to know really what's going to happen is in November. And he's right, you know. Mm-hmm. But if you're a fan of something, see, that's not even the right thing to say. To me, it, I'm a nerdy fan and I have this mind where I like to figure stuff out. You know, that's how I learned about computers. That's how I learned about stuff. I love writing stories, I, even if I'm not really good at it. I love doing all this stuff. So to me, there's a natural instinct to want to figure out what he is doing and to want to know and figure out how it's going to happen and see how close my assumptions are. So mm. while I wait for the th- November, the 50th of November, I will still do that. <laughs> So. Yeah, I just thinking about spoilers. I'm like, yeah, I didn't like try to find anything out. I went, well, I'll just see it. I yeah. think I mean, I'd rather be different, you know. But but I knew spoilers about Nightmare and Silver, and it didn't really change my opinion of it when I watched it. I mean, and mm-hmm. actually, what was the other episode? There was another episode that aired that I knew spo- a lot of spoilers about that really made it sound awesome. And then I watched it, and I was like, eh. <laughs> was it like Hyde or Journey to the Center of the Tardis? Oh, was it Journey? No, because I, th- I thought Journey was all right. I thought Hyde was all right. Oh, maybe it was Crimson Horror. Oh, that one still doesn't. That doesn't still doesn't sit right with me because of the ending. You know, it just doesn't. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't think it was. It just. Well, Nightmare and Silver. I, there's spoilers. There could be spoilers because isn't that the script that was left in a taxi? Uh, like a while ago when it was being filmed, like someone, an editor, or someone like left a copy of the script in a taxi. And, like, someone found it, and they, like, put a picture of it up on, like, Facebook. And I think the BBC... Instagrammed it or something. I think the BBC claimed it, and they didn't. But... I don't know. I think that was the script that was out there floating around. Probably not even its... I don't even know if it was its finished version. But I I remember the story, like, it was just in a taxi. Well, it's interesting (laughs) you bring that up, because there's a very good interview. It's not real long, either, with uh, Neil Gaiman. And it's on Collider.com. And they asked him stuff like, would you like to do another episode? And he said, yeah, he'd like to do another episode. He likes working with Who and all that. And he'd like to create a monster that would be interesting enough and fun enough to come to be reoccurring. Mm-hmm. Or if he was going to bring back an old one, he'd love to bring back, like, the Yeti <laughs> and make them scary. You know? Mm-hmm. But there's something he mentioned about, about um, in that same article, he mentioned that the original setting for Nightmare was supposed to be not a theme park, but like a fair in like 1950s England or something to that effect. Like something, mm. a different setting. And yeah. he didn't say anything directly, but then he said how he likes being told what parameters to write in because it makes it easier from the right because he knows, okay, here's my start, here's my finish. I have to fill this in. Mm. To me, when we were debating why the kids were in it, I had also read that Moffat wanted those kids in that episode. So I think maybe that's why this it changed. So which version of that script would have been found in mm. the taxi? I don't know. Yeah. It'd be really interesting to read the original script before any changes were made. I'd like to see. Yeah, I would. I'd read mm-hmm. that. Yeah, I'm but, sure it went know. through many, many, many changes because. Oh. Well, he said too. I was reading something where he was talking about how on on Doctor Who he was like he loves doing it, but you really don't get paid much. And, and he, he was saying he in America he each. Time. And in America, he said each, like, 
rewrite that you do, you get paid for. Whereas for Doctor Who, you get paid for your script and then you rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it on the same <laughs> check. For he those, still acted like he'd do it again, but oh, yeah, yeah I mean, he how, wasn't. I mean, why but he not? mentioned, you know, could could not uh, doing it for the money. You know, could Neil Gaiman become become uh, the next the next Douglas Adams of Doctor Who? Because remember, Douglas Adams was a sci-fi writer. He wrote a couple episodes and he was script editor or something like that. He had yeah, a job so, on the yeah, show. Yeah, he did. You know, and, I don't think Neil's going to be doing that just yet because he has books coming out and he does book tours. Well, I didn't say he, right now. Mm-hmm. He's down the road. I mean, maybe. I mean, we don't know what he is, his plans are, but I don't see him actually doing it. I think he's only doing it because it's fun and it's something that he enjoys. Which is great. I mean, I have no problem with that. He wants to do a third one. I mean, he said that. Uh, he is one guy mm-hmm. I would like to sit down with. And, and like, we, we remember we watched the Felicia Day's The Guild? Mm-hmm. And he's in that one episode. I'm like, yeah. God, I would love to sit down with Neil Gaiman and just be like, you know, what? when you write a book, I mean, do you, are you working like eight hours a day? How does it work? You know, how do you do it, man? Uh, you, how did you? What's your process to come up with this stuff? Because like, he's had so many great ideas. It's like, how do you? And, mm-hmm. and then here he is on, you know, the guild. I'm like, you bastards. <laughs> we, I, I still haven't watched the last season of that, but but I would love to sit down with Neil Gaiman and just be like, dude, I haven't finished reading all your stuff. What I've read mm-hmm. has been great. Your Doctor Who episodes have been great, ish. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> um, but that that's. All I found news-wise, I mean, there's really nothing. I mean, what are you going to do, you know? Closer to the 50th, you're going to get more stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny, I was telling Nicole, I, I, some podcasters that I've listened to have been, like, downing the fanboys, or whatever you want to call them, the nerds, who, like, speculate on stuff. And it's like, well, but that's what makes us that. <laughs> yeah. Like, Chris Hardwick said it. He said, you know... The difference between a geek and a nerd is that a nerd fixates on the one thing that they love and they know everything about it and they learn everything about it and they, you know. So it's kind of, you know, our thing. <laughs> That's how we work. But, yeah, I, I don't know. We'll see. I guess we could just hop right into uh, Nightmare and Silver. <laughs> and you know what? Yep. Nicole, you start this one off. <laughs> Well, from what you've told me, I I think I'm gonna be kind of in the middle of you maybe yeah <laughs> this one because I I liked it, but I was kind of disappointed in it, and I I enjoyed it, and I I just thought there was so much like there were so many great ideas. But then some of them, it felt like maybe because of editing, they were just, like, cut out because there's parts that aren't really explained or, like, there's that line when they're talking about the amusement park. They never really talk about why it was closed. Yeah, they do. They say it got uh, it got beat up during the cyber wars, and they just never fixed it. But then they've got that thing about, like, people... Stopped going, you're right. Disappearing. Yeah, they don't the really The doctor yeah, throws right in a line that. about... All of a sudden, he's ta- when he's talking to the cyber planner, that's he's right. like, the, he, he says, so that's where the people who disappeared went. You were using them for spare parts. And I'm like, what people who disappeared? You're right. You never well, mentioned because, them you know, before. The, and it's funny because they did mention that the people stopped coming. But at some point, they say it got, dis- ha- like, the, it's in the condition it is because of the war. So which is it? I, I, think- I didn't even think. I did not even catch that. Because I was going, what I people caught it, disappeared? But I, didn't th- I didn't put it together. I'm like, what? You never mentioned people, but the line's written like it has been mentioned, so I thought that was probably cut. I'm not sure that was, like, fault in the writing. I think the editing on that, they had to cut stuff because probably he had so much stuff that they just went, okay, we don't have to. Because he said, too, there was, I, I was watching it, sitting there going, why are the children not sleeping in the TARDIS? Like, why would you have them sleep out there? Why wouldn't you put them in the TARDIS? That's a good point. I was but, watching it going, why in the hell are these kids even in this episode? Yes. Oh, yeah, that was... But he, like Neil Gaiman said at 1.2, that there was a scene that explained why the children weren't sleeping in the TARDIS, but that got cut. Well, so, the TARDIS was in a whole different area, wasn't it? Well, it was in that ride, the Spacey Zoomer. Yeah. But they could have taken them there, because that was before they knew the Cybermen were attacking. Oh, that's true. But he said there was a scene that got cut, so I went, so maybe a lot of these things were just he had too much for one episode and things disappeared. 
But yeah, my main complaint would be those children. I did not like them. Well, tell us some of the stuff you did like about the episode. <laughs> I mean, we'll get to what you didn't like, you know. Or you do you want to start off with, start off with the bad news? Let's hear what you mm-hmm. didn't like about the episode. Well, you I said I, I thought there were coals, and I did not like those children. I I didn't understand why they were there. Because they're in a walking coma for most of the episode. Well, what I read earlier, what I just read, what I was talking about earlier, it seems from what I've read in other places, was that Moffat wanted them in there. I'm assuming he wanted them for like a dramatic effect, like, oh, these children are in danger, and the doctor needs to save them. But the little girl's a complete word. I'm not going to say on this right now. Yeah, she's and a you, complete and- spoiled little teenager. That's a good. That's a that's a very nice way of putting what I was thinking. That you know what is very unlikable. Constantly is telling Clara, you're not my mom, but Clara never really acts like her mom. She's like, mm-hmm. oh, hey, let's go over here. You're not my mom. What the? What? She's a teenager. You know what? A- I, I grew up in, I was, my sister was a teenager and I was a teenager. My sister didn't act like that. <laughs> oh, she, you, oh, yeah, I know you're, I know, and I know my, my other upstairs too. I know. I'm not <laughs> saying it doesn't happen. I'm just saying. She has, it's not that she's, I can understand if she wants to rebel, but there's such a chip on her shoulder about the mom, which I can understand her mom died. I get it. But she targets Clara with this, like, intense hatred when Clara could just say hello. <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it, I'll get to my, anyways, well, back to Nicole, because yeah. I'm trying not to interrupt people, so stop. <laughs> no, it's just, to me, <laughs> it was like she, I didn't care about them yeah. at all. No, I just said, I realized when I was watching it that I just didn't care. Like, I wasn't like, oh no, these children are in danger. They yeah. need to be protected or what. I was like, I, I don't really, I didn't wish them harm, but I wasn't like concerned. I was just like, well, that's one of us. Oh, okay. They're captured. Oh, well, Cause you didn't really get to know them. I mean, the boy was okay. Just, you didn't really know him. Yeah, the, the girl the was I didn't mind. obnoxious, and you were kind of like, I, I don't... But I and, thought and they were going to be... he wasn't that much younger than her. So I understand the bratty teenager part, but... I mean, she was maybe 13-ish, 14? He was maybe 11? Right? Probably. Could it's be, yeah. Right 14, about there? 15? 14. I, I'd say I think she was about 14. I think she was younger, yeah. I, yeah I don't Could think be 13. Was, I'd say 13 or 14, and yeah, he was right around 11. I don't think she 11. was a high schooler. I'd say he was 10 or 11, maybe 11 or 12. So, the I mean, he should be acting the same way in a sense. Then you know. So but, I don't yeah, know. I just I didn't I didn't understand like when they were when the end and that made me even more annoyed though at, at the ending of Crimson Horror when I went that was so obviously to shoehorn the children into this episode and I thought well maybe Neil Gaiman wanted them there or they're part of the plot. But it was like, it seemed like, oh, we need children, we need children's minds. And it's like, oh, no, screw the children. The doctor, forget them, put them in a coma, we'll know, take you. You know what's funny is I like <laughs> this concept that they explain that they're an amalgamation of the two Cybermen, mm-hmm. basically. Because the doctor reads their history kind of thing and knows, okay, the goal thing. So it seems like at some point the alternate dimension ones and the regular ones join. Mm-hmm. Or maybe battle or whatever happened, happened. Yeah. I liked that. That yeah. was great. That being said, shouldn't they know who he is? Well, he was erased. Uh, from, from, he was erased from the Dalek. They, but the Daleks knew who he was after he was erased. Until Clara erased him again. Well, I, Remember, they kidnapped him, so they knew who he was still. But they still go on with this, you've been erasing yourself from... Which is, but you can be reconstructed the by the whole con- you But the left. cyber controller said, yeah. So it's like, shouldn't you know who he was? And if you know who he was, granted, Big Finish audios are not really considered canon. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong. But they've had encounters with him before. They know how his mind works. And in the one Big Finish audio where that shows the beginning of the Cybermen, they, it's almost the same concept. They want his mind because it has, like, an extra lobe for, so- to, for something. Mm-hmm. So it, it's not like they shouldn't know who he was. And I get that he was erased from time. I, I okay, whatever. <laughs> but the, his arch enemy Dalek still who knew who he was. The Great Intelligence knows who he is. You know what I mean? All these other bad guys know who he was. So all of a sudden, the Cybermen don't know who he is. Yeah, okay. 
Well, yeah, but I liked what he. <laughs> I liked the yeah the combination of the Cybermen, and that's what I liked. I liked I the like, Cybermen. That was good. I, I liked. I mean, I thought, unlike some other episodes like Journey to the Center of the TARDIS, there were interesting people in this one because I was like, okay, I kind of like Porridge and who who they d- War, War Davis if I'm yeah. correct who did a, f- oh. a, a you know a phenomenal job as usual because mm-hmm. isn't he from uh, was he. Was it Lord of the Rings? Leprechaun. No, but it, wasn't he like Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter or something too? Harry Potter. Yeah, he did two parts in Harry yeah. Potter. Yeah, I mean, he, he's an excellent actor, and he did an excellent job. Mm-hmm. I said, like, I liked his care. Even, I thought... The woman that was in charge of the... the but... Uh, you, she, was, she was hard to like. Yeah, but at least she, but she had did the a job. personality, and you knew why she was doing what she did. But they, that like, be, yeah. gave but, her motivation rather but, than... Yeah. Like the faceless person who's just, I'm going to blow up this planet. Why? We never know. So I'm just here to be. The fact that I find her, I find, found her hard to like in a sense shows that the actress did a good job. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But she was, you could tell she was a conflicted character, you know, and that, and it's all well and good, and she did a good job portraying it. I was There kinda... were a couple of goofy ones in the, like, platoon or whatever you want to call it that you're like, really? Are you comic relief? Like, the, the guy with the curly hair and the glasses, you're like, Really? How did you even get in? I don't. Well, get... they were the punishment platoon. Well, I understand that, but how do you misfits. get in? The... How do you get in in the first place? <laughs> but I don't want to know. I I thought well, that yeah. was something that I thought was good, though. That unlike some, like it had interesting characters. So I was like, I was really it disappointed did. when Webley was taken over so soon because I was like, he was kind of an eccentric character there, and then. Like, but when you have forty-four minutes or so to yeah. work with. Oh, I get why, but I yeah. was like, I liked his character, <laughs> and then he was gone. Him being taken over would have been all you needed. You could you could seriously take the children out of this episode, not rewrite anything, and mm-hmm. it would still work. Yeah, I mean, well, the episode the way it was would still. I mean, it, it, it there was no bearing on the story from them. I was no, really, I... Uh, yeah. I said they were most of the episode. Oh, she had almost... no. She had one little surprise thing she said that Clara's well, like, oh, good for you. Well, at, at the end, but somebody else could have done that. She's the one that figures out Porridge is the emperor. Yeah, but which was obviously a vital part of the episode. But somebody else could have said that. It didn't have to be her. Although it was remarkable that she came out of that walking coma and instantly remembered it, not foggy at all. And it was you know, great how emperor. smug and bitchy she was about it. <laughs> Duh, he looks just like the statue. Yeah, except the statue's 6'2", Porridge is 3 foot. <laughs> I still don't think I would have looked at that statue and gone, yes, that's him, even knowing that. It didn't instantly, like, no, looking at it. No, because I didn't think the statue I... looked that much like him. No. And As they really wax show, they didn't statues really show often the, don't. They didn't really show the coin long enough for me to get a good look no, either. No, they didn't really. But, yeah, so. I I thought, yeah, I liked the I thought I thought he did a good job with the Cybermen, making them fast and kind of scary. Yeah, I'll get to that. But... Although I found it a little hard to believe they could, like, when they were upgrading, like, I could see them maybe being able to upgrade, like, programming issues and stuff, but it seemed like they could just, yeah, I'll this get to is that. crushing I'm gonna, me, I'm gonna get to that also, this yeah. destroys us, but now we'll just upgrade and magically it doesn't yeah. anymore. Yeah, I had I'll, a bit I, of a I, problem with that I aspect. did too, and I have a whole spiel I'll go through on that, because I, I completely agreed with that. But I also did, the one thing I didn't understand. I don't mind that they moved more naturally. I thought that was good. Mm-hmm. I don't understand how the first one seemed to move at the speed of sound <laughs> or speed of light, even. Yet after that scene, they never did it again. Yeah. I I think that speed was too much. I think that was going too far with it. You know, you're you're never going to convince me that the Cybermen are the Daleks. No matter how hard you try, no matter what writer you bring in, no matter how good they look and how good they move, they just aren't. They don't. Ha- they're, they're sorry. <laughs> you know, and to move, have them move the way that did was just. I think that was a little bit much. You know, it's kind of like, really, that, you know, now all of a sudden, because I didn't mind them being quieter. I, I understood that. I liked the new sleeker look, mm-hmm. you know. But like I said, I liked the backstory. 
Yeah. But, yeah, when I saw that, I was like, are you sh- so what, they're invulnerable because you can't touch them? You can't catch them? You can't shoot at them? I mean, really? So yeah, I, didn't, they... I didn't buy that at all. I thought it was better than, I thought that was definitely the best Cyberman episode of the new series. It's not hard to, yeah, well. <laughs> but. Like, when the Cyberman first came back, I was like, I like how they looked. I just didn't like the, like that they were from a parallel world. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't. I mean, I understood it because Mon- Mondesi? Mondesi? Mondas. Mondas mm-hmm. was alleged, according to the Doctor and stuff I've seen before, or, st- or the Big Finish Audio even, was an identical Earth in another part of the galaxy. Our parallel twin sis- planet. Our twin planet. So I guess saying instead of it being in another part of the galaxy, saying it's from an alternate world, I, it worked. I-, I understood it. You know, and when I first saw it, I was like, okay, they're cool looking. They're... You know, not the old ones. It just didn't make any sense that, like, they still don't, even now, after this, they don't scare me. They don't impress me. (laughs) Uh, They just don't. I mean, and basically, yeah, you could write an episode where you write them to be the baddest ass things in the world, but go watch the five doctors. One of them got killed by getting a wooden arrow shot through him. (laughs) And no... Software upgrade is going to fix your armor to do that. You know, just like what you were saying with the upgrade, it was it got out of hand. They're blasting him with that one gun, and then all of a sudden he goes upgrading, and he blasts it, and it bounces off. That's sh- shenanigans. <laughs> it's impossible. Mm. It just no, you cannot, you can't do that with hardware. They didn't say they yeah. were made out of nanobots or anything. No. They're still made out of yeah. the same material. That was my problem with the when upgrades. He's get, it's my yeah. biggest problem, and I, my biggest problem was he's in the water, he's getting electrocuted, and he goes upgrading, and all of a sudden he's not, he's immune to the water. No, I've been in, ele- I've been dealing with electronics and computers for over eighteen years. You would have to reconstruct them with rubber insulation and all kinds of pre- precautions. You can't just upgrading and do it. No, it doesn't mm-hmm. work that way. It wouldn't that one have died anyway, and then the other ones would have just That's upgraded? That's what I thought, yeah. I thought that one would be gone, and then the others would maybe upgrade. and Yeah, but then he But could... even that wouldn't make sense. No. They might as well but... just have had them all stand on each other's shoulders and make a bridge <laughs> to the castle. <laughs> the comical castle that had nothing comical in it? They made such a big point of that. I was waiting for something comical to happen Can in the castle. Can you tell me why they never bring the TARDIS to where they're going to be? Remember the old episodes? It was always where they needed it. <laughs> Now it's like on the other side of a planet that's about to implode. <laughs> yeah, I. I <sighs> he just yeah, but, he doesn't bring it into battle. Remember? Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> but uh. but I I will say the other thing I thought was good, which I was expecting, was the all the references to classic New Who that he, he like scattered throughout because, like, he had the even the Ninth Doctor's fantastic the. Cyber planner. He starts like oh, picking yeah, yeah. his when, memories, when, when and Smith he was playing both characters, and yeah. he uses fantastic and yeah. Eccleston's accent, and then he has yeah. the LNC because he's picking through his memories. Yeah, and they showed all the faces, and then all those little references to the. But past. suddenly he knew. But the, it's funny how the cyber planner knew what the time what the time lords were, and he goes, "There's information on the time lords in here." It's like there's only allegedly one left, dude. I'm not going to help you. <laughs> I know you've been I know you've been away a thousand years, but <laughs> times have changed, my friend. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I thought, and he had all those little references to like the moon base or the gold from Attack. Was it Re- Revenge of the Cybermen? Right. Well, from every old Cybermen episode. No, that didn't come in until Baker. Gold. Oh uh, yeah, because in the in the well yeah in the, in Tomb of the Cybermen they didn't really delve onto that. They just no. locked them in the tomb. And they really do stop them in the moon base with cleaning fluids. Yeah. But Melt I think their... when they got to the bakery years, they wanted something a little mm-hmm. different. So then all of a sudden, gold. And well, they... You know, it's funny how they're so powerful, they had to destroy a galaxy to wipe them out. Mm-hmm. Except that they were allergic to gold. <laughs> and apparently and still fluid. were. <laughs> and still were. But, yeah, they have had some... But yeah, I, I liked the little references, and I thought it was funny that even the new Who references stuck in there. And I'm, I kept looking at like the wax figures when he was like, "These are the most infamous," and I was like, "I think." It would have been great to have seen like Hartnell. 
I was like, I, I'm sure these must have connections to the show, but I wasn't actually recognizing them mostly. I was like, what is that? I don't think there were any. It seemed like that would be a... I'd have to look at it again. It seemed like they wouldn't miss a chance, but there wasn't anyone like... That's not towering. Nothing clearly recognizable. If they were, they were very obscure to me. <laughs> yeah, same here. I didn't recognize anything there. Because I kept did, going, there's got to be did something. Did you recognize anybody in the Wax Museum that looked like a Doctor Who baddie from before? I don't know. I'm not too familiar with the old school. No, but you know the Tenant series pretty well. I mean, you know the Eccleston. I didn't. I mean, I didn't. Because the Eccleston one, I didn't see anybody even from like when he was on like uh, in the end of the no. world. Like, you know, mm-hmm. a, a tree or, you know. Yeah. You know. You know what? I wish I did. I paid more attention to that because I didn't really. I'd yeah. like to see this again. I, you know, I'd have to pause through it and look, but I didn't notice anything. Because was... I was looking, going, "There's got to be something there that's going to be did like you a to reference." See like a Dalek, a Zygon, something. Why not? Why, you... why would you? Know, doesn't it astonish you that in a, ga- a galaxy that's been at war, that the Daleks have tried to take over numerous times, no one ever seems to know who they are. <laughs> I mean, the same planets that the Cybermen have, have attacked, the Daleks have attacked. I, like, it would have been great to have seen a wax Dalek. That's all I'm saying. That, that's all I'm getting at. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that would have been that would have been priceless. Yeah. But yeah, I I, I said I, I enjoyed it watching it, but I was kind of disappointed because I was hoping it would be, like, maybe like you know one of those classic episodes that's. One of the best of the season, and I was like, I liked it, but... For all the people out there that give crap to the classic series because of special effects or whatnot, there were so many episodes, whether they're Cybermen or Daleks or whoever, that were so good just because of the writing of them and the development of the plot that I could get past hokey special effects. (laughs) You know what? I've been saying, I think I've been saying this, I would rather have, like, a well-written hokey story, like, with hokey effects, and then have, like, a poorly written story with fantastic effects. Yeah. Yeah. Effects. I, I agree. And, and, you know, like, Rings of Rings of Akaton, other than the part where he's on the motor scooter or whatever you want mm-hmm. to call it, I mean, the effects weren't bad. I mean, the mm-hmm. costuming and stuff was good, but the story was just bad. Yeah, it was like a showcase for special effects instead of a story. Yeah, including one bad special effect. But yeah. And you know, it's it's like it's even like the tenant specials. A lot of them looked good. <laughs> they just weren't there. Mhm. Yeah, but. this I thought this one though maybe maybe Neil Gaiman should have been allowed to write a two-parter. I agree. Because it seemed like so much was cut to fit the but I know the idea was no two parters. Just I don't understand why. I mean, what, what's the difference? Like episodes. You know what? Give us one really good two parter, and I don't think anyone's going to complain. No one is. People are just going to go, "Oh my god!" It just seems like a lot of these stories that are good could could have been great. Mm-hmm. You know, in in a different time format. Yeah, this this one just like seemed to me like when it was over, I'm like, I think that should have been a two parter. Like that he totally could have filled yeah. two episodes just fine, and you could have fleshed out some of the stuff and the backstory. And weren't you kind of hoping that they were going to start taking out Cybermen, like almost like how in the movie Home Alone, <laughs> like because they're in this fun castle thing, you, you know, like maybe like a, a a a tree trunk comes swinging by and hits one. I mean, wouldn't you? Didn't you expect something kind of creative for the well, last I said, like fight I was, scene? I was really expecting, which I, maybe that was the point. He fooled me. They really stressed the comical castle. Yeah. She's like, the castle, and, and the captain's like, you mean Natty Longshoe's comical castle? Yeah. Yes, it's like a castle. And she goes, but comical. So I'm like, okay, so it's going to be kind of wacky. I'm like, it looks like just a small castle. It looked like the set they filmed the Shakespeare episode on, <laughs> only without the Globe Theater in it. I was like, it, it just looks like a... Yeah, there was, maybe there, there was something was nothing, else that was planned for it. That's but why it I wondered if, like, anywhere. budget or time, did they cut something out oh, there? I did, re- I did read that budget-wise there were issues with this episode from the get-go from what he wanted to do. 
So I did read there were budget and, and there were budget issues with um the doctor's wife too when he mm-hmm. did that. Yeah. But But yeah, I was expecting the whole time and I'm like, okay, what is going to happen? Yeah. Something's got to and I'm like, there's nothing comical here. It's just like the most boring castle. <laughs> it has a moat and a drawbridge and lots of hallways that are kind of gray and empty. Like I could have swore they ran past a zero room. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I don't know. <gasps> that that disappoint. I mean, and that was. It's not like my enjoyment of the episode hinged on the no, castle I, being I, comical. Yeah, but I was a little dis. I was like, they set it up like they really emphasized comical. It's comical. It's the comical castle. So they I'm did. like, yeah. okay, so something comical is going to happen there, and no, no, I don't know. It's just the most. That would be like the most boring amusement park attraction. Come walk across the drawbridge, walk down a hallway, and... Back across the drawbridge. <laughs> we have a moat. How funny. <laughs> so, Joanna, how about you? I enjoyed the the good doctor, bad doctor part. Yes, I agree. Oh, you, Matt Smith is a brilliant actor. Oh, plus, what a good way, what plus, what plus what a good way to save money on the budget, have one guy play two characters. <laughs> He did so very well. He had to memorize twice the lines for the episode game and set, actually. <laughs> Which really, I mean, he did a great job doing that. That was one of the best parts of the episode, was watching him. And I loved his banter with Clara. And I loved the bad actor's banter with Clara. Because she knew. You could tell. When he's kind of hitting I, on her. At point, I could not <laughs> tell if it was a real doctor, but I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> and then she smacked him, like... Wow, she's... There was a lot of smacking going on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was a lot of smacking in this episode. It started with last episode. Mm. Oh, you know, speaking of... Dude, real quick, speaking of the last episode, Crimson Horror, did anybody think anything of the fact that when she took off the the Victorian outfit and she had the cat suit under it, did anybody think anything about him holding the screwdriver up and then putting it down? <laughs> no, because I, I, I didn't make this assumption. I was listening to Radio Free Scaro, and one of the guys pointed that out and said, you know, made a comment about that. And the other guys were like, I don't think it was really meant to be that way. Mm-hmm. And I thought about it. I'm like, you know, was it maybe put in there for the adults to be like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Or was it just because, I mean, he had the screwdriver out before she did that. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it was just kind of like, oh, I guess I don't need this. I'll put it away. Mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't that, read that's into That's how it. I took it. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Anyways, back to this one. Sorry about that. I just I thought I'd throw was, that in there. I, I love yeah. the conflict between the good actor, back doctor, and the chess game. Because the doctor's always right, and he always wins. He lies. <laughs> Pardon? He lies, so if he does lose, he doesn't tell you. <laughs> exactly. Also, um, I loved <sighs> Porridge, the Emperor. He's yeah. Pork in this. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, like we said earlier, I mean, I. I, I, anytime I've seen him in anything, he's been he's been excellent, and it continued. I mm-hmm. loved his character. I loved how he played the, that emperor. I loved how he played that character. Mm-hmm. Yes, because you knew I, like because he whole looked time conflicted. He kn- something you knew something was going was on, but you didn't know what? exactly what. Yeah. Well, if you looked at the wax statue, yes, and you were twelve. <laughs> Yes, if you're really obnoxious, you see things really clearly. Here's the thing. you got to remember, Nicole teaches kids these a- this age. <laughs> uh-huh. If anyone's an expert on how kids this age act, it's her. <laughs> and they really are not that obnoxious. No, they're not. I mean, what did you think of these kids, Joanna? Well, I thought the girl was a little overkill. I mean, like, she was... She was a defiant little teenage bride. I mean, like... I mean, I know what I mean, they like were going it, for. It was just... It was a little bit too much. Yeah, listen, when you're, when, you're on a, when you're on an alien planet and you're with an alien... First off, didn't you think that they took to him being an alien and traveling through time and space just like nothing? Yeah. Like they were going to, 7- yes. like, to like the local 7-Eleven or whatever they have in England? They were going to Tesco down the block like nothing's different? Well, even in the beginning when they think they're on the moon, they're just like great you brought us to the moon and i'm like yeah i would think you'd go wow i'm on the moon it's a few hundred thousand miles away and you could still breathe on it so something (laughs) obviously is it should be impressing you 
they're just like, eh. I mean, they didn't they didn't get to show their TARDIS reaction, but I totally picture them just walking in like, this is it, really? Okay, fine. Like they they seem totally not excited by anything, and yeah. kids that age get excited about stuff. Well, they do. Most of his companions are in their twenties and get excited. Yeah, <laughs> but it's not like all kids that age are, they're just jaded and they're. I don't care because they're not. They they, but I thought what we were missing was any kind of connection with her to like make like if you were supposed to understand, it didn't work because we no. didn't know her enough to no. go. Oh, okay. She's still dealing with the death of her mother and she's acting out. Or well, I mean, it was only, just all of a sudden you meet her and she's the only inkling you ever have about it being because of the mom is when she references to Claire yeah. that you're not my mom. Mm-hmm. My question is, is like we saw a different girl. Like when we first met the girl, she seemed a little bit more relaxed or less snotty. Less conniving? Yes. Oh, she seemed pretty snotty when Clara was asking how the internet worked and all that. You know more than one people can, more than one person can use it at a time. I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a typical answer. For but that, I think at like that point I was willing to excuse that because I thought that was a completely ridiculous point that Clara didn't know that True. one person True. couldn't. So to me, I went, I, mean, I thought it was okay. a, I thought it was a little side character that we're not going to see again. Mm-hmm. But boy, was I wrong. Well, we really didn't see much of her. She, I said, she's in the walking coma most of the episode. I think you've episodes. seen. You know what? One episode of her is all you need. I, yeah, in fact, I'm not, if you're if you're if you're, on, if you're on the fence about having kids, watch this episode. <laughs> I, the only thing that I wonder is if like there's some kind of involvement of the kids like later on, so he, they needed this experience so he can tie it in later or not something. Because I, not from anything I've read. Because I don't understand why they were there. Because they, they were blackmailing Clara. But but I think, did you notice how different they were at the end when they're like, okay, bye, Clara's boyfriend, thanks. Suddenly they're all nicey-nice. Was this, like, what they needed to, like, get over and, like, find joy in life again, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I don't But care. they don't they just give you any away. of that. They shouldn't have been in it, period. Yeah. If you're going to put in this thing that she's, like, if she was obnoxious because she lost her mother and she's good, then you needed something more to, like move that storyline along like show at the end okay she's dealing with this or and why did the why did the boy seem to not give, give, care at all i don't think he did i don't did he even know i mean he didn't seem like he cared at all about any, he was perfectly fine and normal and there wasn't like i said there wasn't a huge age gap between them so he was definitely old enough to remember his mom i mean based off clara's you know what she said when yeah, she joined the family that long it ago. wasn't that long yeah. ago Oh, he must still be in shock. Well, people do. I mean, I can give them that. The kids deal with it differently. They, it just... You know what? Maybe if they had gotten two kids that could act, it would have <laughs> been better. Because mm-hmm. quite honestly, it's... The, the characters shouldn't... Those who shouldn't have been in it, and the, the two kids that were playing it, I give them... You know what? I, I'm not an actor. I'm sure it's a lot harder than it looks, but you could have found better actors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't really care for the kids, but, like, the two doctors playing against themselves, I loved. I yep. mean, like, that to me was, like, see, that was, like, my favorite part of the episode. When he slaps that gold, that gold foil on his face. Yeah. He goes, so, that's your ace in the hole? And he's like, <laughs> he just slaps yep. it on. <laughs> and he got it. I mean, he won. Oh, yeah. So, I loved the episode. I still hate the Cybermen, though, but... That's all I have to say. <laughs> I love the episode because I love Neil Gaiman. He's one of my favorite authors, and he loved the Doctor's wife. Yeah, I just don't blame. So, I don't blame him for anything that really went wrong with no, this one. No, because I don't think I mean, you know. You you can't. It's hard to take such a good writer and be like, "Here's forty two minutes." You can't. Or forty four minutes, or whatever it was. Yeah, 46. you can't do that. You know, and yeah, he you know. I, again, I don't really blame him for it. I mean, my understanding is the kids weren't his idea. The original setting wasn't his idea. I mean, how much of that's true? Who knows? You know? Mm-hmm. I'm kind of believing in Neil on this because it's not his 
then it would have been different. I think it would have been much better. Well, because he, 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 he originally he wanted it. He originally had turned down in that interview I read. He had originally turned it down doing it, and then Moffat said, "I want you to make the Cybermen scary again," and he's like, mm-hmm. "Okay, I'll do it." And I, I, they're just not scary to me. Like the Borg from Star Trek. I mean, it's basically a ripoff of the Cybermen. The Borg are kind of scary. You know, they, they'd be scarier to me than the Cybermen. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, he was trying to make them scary were... by making they were they were scarier than the old yeah. ones or the prior ones. But you know, I never look at Cybermen as scary. I just look at them as like the Santarans almost, where it's just an army that you know, it, like just to compare them to like the Daleks, it's like it's just so one one are so the, like the intentions of the two. I think are what makes it not as scary. Like. Their, the Cybermen intention is, oh, well, we think we're better because everybody should be like us. Da, da, da. It's not that they don't, they don't really, to me, it's almost like they don't really think of it as killing you, but upgrading they're you, making you, you better. They're helping you. The Daleks, oh, no, 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 there's hatred there. <laughs> <laughs> there That's there's, actual there's, hatred. There, there is no, we want to upgrade you. There is, get out of our way, we want to turn you to dust. That mentality makes a big difference. Yeah. But still kind of. the Daleks. The Cybermen, the Cybermen have... It could be kind of creepy, the way they just think everyone should be like that. And now they can make anyone, not just humans. <laughs> Time Lords, anyone did, they come did, across can lo- be upgraded. would you love to seem like a dog go running by? <laughs> no, no, I agree that they're creepy. I mean, you know, but... Well, I think sometimes what made them kind of creepy originally was the idea that they were humans that chose to upgrade themselves so they lost their humanity well, and they, they kind of moved in... away from that as it went on to just okay they're out to shoot you and if you want to like go by what was said in like the big finish audio was that Mondas was dying and was uh they were they couldn't go on the surface it was heading towards like a sun or something some weird thing with the planet and you know they slowly started putting cyber implants on and then some people didn't want to feel pain anymore so some people had their you know emotions ripped out but the full suited cyber characters were designed to be workers on the surface of the planet that no one could go to because of harsh conditions to build a propulsion system that was going to send Mondas away from its doom Mm -hmm. so that's you know People enlisted to be workers and didn't know that's what was going to happen. So that, you know, that when you when you like listen to that storyline from Big Finish, it's a lot. You you really it's a lot more emotional than this was. Mm-hmm. And even some of the older episodes where you like, and perfect example is Age of Steel and what was the one um the the two part Rise of Rise the Cybermen. Cyberman. That was based off the Big Finish audio, and there's Cybermen that remember who they are. Because the it wasn't com- the conversion wasn't complete. You know, when mm-hmm. you see that, you get this other sense. When even even in the original ones, you got the sense that these were people at one point, like you were saying. This one, you didn't have that sense no. at all. So this at this point, they might as well just be robots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they keep moving. For, which I know technology advances. They probably would be less and less human over time because they. But then, why would you even need the human body, the, the body parts, to make them? Because you need something from them. I think. I don't know what. Well, they use the brain. They use human brains as computing power. We found that out. Well, yeah. I think they mentioned it in other ones too. Yeah. And they can. And now the Cybermen can detach parts, like hands and heads. <laughs> they did, they, ah, they did that before. Remember when Rory was waiting for uh, Amy? Remember those episodes? Amy got attacked by the hand. Mm-hmm. And the head, I think. But that seemed like the. It was like a Cyberman that had been like blown apart and things see, were functioning. Now didn't... they can just go, go away, But hand. didn't that part, didn't, to me, that Cyberman that was blown apart in that episode was scarier than anything I saw yesterday. <laughs> or yesterday, whenever I watched it. Yeah, yesterday. In mm-hmm. this episode. Yeah, that one. But now, yeah, that seemed to be another new adaptation. They can go send my hand over to investigate. I can leave my head here and my body magically knows where to go, even though the head's looking the wrong way. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you do wonder how much 
I mean, because they've made a point of, yeah, they were using humans for spare parts and all this stuff. That was and that I'm like, the, ep- the Big Finish was called Spare Parts. And I'm like, it did seem like, as the episode goes on, you're like, there doesn't seem to be much no, and human in the, left and in, the in old, there. In the old ones, there was always some part of them that was still human that the doctor would try to reason with or reckon with. There was always something still there. Mm-hmm. And, sorry, we totally derailed and hijacked Joanna's uh, mm-hmm. I don't remember what I was thinking anymore, but, like, I really love this episode. I mean, like, Super Farm and Neil Gaiman fan. I mean, and I can read with Nicole, it should have, and you got you too, it should have been a two-part episode. It's supposed to mm-hmm. one. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, so, I mean. I mean, like, the thing is, it's like, when you want to see, like, all the storylines fleshed out, but to me, like, I just want to see a well-done story. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it, have been, wouldn't it be great to see Gaiman do a Dalek episode? <laughs> oh. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know if they'd be as much as Thing, though. No. Of course. If you want of course, something. Of course it's Neil Gaiman, though. <laughs> I mean, there are episodes where, you, where Daleks have emotion. I mean, they were afraid of the asylum. They were afraid of Clara in the asylum planet. Yes, they were. I mean, there are things you could... I mean, there's a lot that... A lot of you know things you can explore with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He would have been, but I mean, so you you enjoyed it. I mean, you liked oh, it, yeah. so you were yeah. kind of on the fence about it. I Nic- liked it. Nicole but likes it, but I didn't. Yeah. But I know my expectations were high because Neil Gaiman wrote it, so I was like, it's gonna be awesome, and then yeah. I'm kind of like, mm, didn't quite get there. But do you ever do you see? You know, okay, but you generally liked it. And Joanna, you liked it a lot. A lot. Uh, me, I enjoyed it, but I was disappointed because Neil Gaiman is so good, but the Cybermen just there's not to me a lot there unless you're exploring the human side of them, which you don't explore anymore. Mm-hmm. I thought you know, I thought the episode looked good. I thought the Cybermen looked great. The new yeah. look, I, I like it a lot. It's they're sleeker. They almost resemble the the older ones because of that. They're not like big and bulky with mm-hmm. like bell bottom steel pants on. Yeah, I mean, so that was good. Oh, man, the kids, oh, so unlike. She was so unlikable. The mm-hmm. acting of the kids was horrible. Ninety percent of the episode, they're just sitting there, and then she has the revelation about him being the emperor. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like that. Uh, totally useless to have him in there. Well, and it was supposed to be, wasn't that? The, that's why I thought they were going to be important. Because in the beginning, didn't he say, like, you know, they needed children's minds because their their powers of they're creative, creative, yeah, yeah, and it would be great. And then I'm like, which is funny because that's the exact like, same. Eh. That was the exact same plot of Remembrance of the Daleks. They needed a child's <laughs> mind to be creative. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was just all shenanigans. On what, the whole child mind thing? Yeah. She was just, I never got, like I said, I ne- she always yelled at Clara saying, you're not my mom. I never got the sense that Clara in any of these scenes with her was trying to be mean, trying to hook up with the dad, trying to replace <laughs> her mom. I, I thought that was just, you know, I understand kids can lash out. I understand people lash out. I understand there's, you know, you may transfer your anger to the wrong person. I get all that. It just wasn't conveyed properly, whether it was because of the girl's acting or because it was a part that was probably shoehorned into the story for whatever. It obviously was, the kids were obviously not part of the story originally because Mm -hmm. they were not, they were not integrated into the storyline naturally in last, in Crimson Horror. Yeah. They were, there was no natural, it was, it was about as blunt as hitting somebody with a hammer. Yeah. It it was a, you know what? It was a subtle, it was as subtle as a nuclear bomb. I mean, it was just that whole right there was bad. Uh, I loved the fact that these Cybermen are allegedly a merger of the two. I think that Mm -hmm. was a great way to go. I think Gaiman came up with a brilliant idea there. I love that. Mm -hmm. Like we've been saying, Warwick Davis was great. You know, Porridge was a great character. The character, um, what was the one that was the caretaker guy? The one with the Webleys? Webley, Webley, I think, was a great character, well acted. Matt Smith did a beautiful job playing both characters. Special effects looked good. Him arguing with him with himself was great. You know, seeing him almost evil and then seeing him good, but like 
the evil with the joy of, oh my God, this is this is great. You know, the way he's jumping around. I'm going to rename myself. I'm not going to be the cyber planner. Mr. Clever. I'm going to be Mr. Clever. I mean, that he did a great job portraying all that. See, I was a little bit disappointed. Well, I think the act, the, I liked his acting of it. Well, I wasn't, I thought the cyber planner acted an awful lot like the doctor. I thought the cyber planner acted an awful lot like a human. I would have liked to have seen him a little bit more different from Matt Smith. I mean, he was good, but I... Well, you got to remember, though, he, the cyber planner doesn't have his own emotions, so to take over the mind of Matt's, of do, the doctor, he's going to adapt that personality. Exactly. Because the cyber, you know, the cyber planner is, log, is logical. It's, you know, not... I'd like to return to the cyber planner. That was mm-hmm. ba- used back in... Uh, Wheel in Space and Invasion. See, you're the title person. You you know all that. Was- <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Did you guys see, like, how they... I think the Daleks are going to come back. Because we didn't see... You mean the We Cyberman. saw part of them just still float around in space. You just said the Daleks are going to come back. No, God, the Cybermen. <laughs> she did say that, yes. though, right? Okay, yes. yeah. Yes, yes. Sorry, I apologize for that. But, it's the Cybermen. No, you know, I, they, oh, they, there's my biggest flaw with this. The Cyberman that's playing chess is a shell. He shows him the inside. There's nothing in it. The doctor scans it with the sonic screwdriver. There's nothing in it. Yet somehow, magically, that night, it's alive. I th- Maybe you were supposed to assume the little cyber mites could, like, form... Okay, and that's another thing. The doctor saw the Cybermites. He scanned the Cybermites. How did he not re- figure it out? <laughs> well, I think he figured it out when he scanned it. But, but he just didn't... He, like, stalled. He took, like, all this time. But before that... Like, he... why was he not getting any readings of any of this? Did Harry Potter's wand malfunction? <laughs> yeah. <gasps> yeah, I... But I, I just It just assumed... seemed really like... It seemed like that was kind of like, okay, I'm guessing, you know, you need to find... You need to have some reason he's going to stay, obviously. And you need to have some reason, mm-hmm. you know, so I get it. The Cybermites, I think, weren't they used... Were they used before somewhere else? No, they had the Cybermats. That's right. The, the mites were new. Yeah, the mats were the, the big, were like the big, huge... Like yeah. rats. No. Well, no, they were more, more snake-like, like, right? Okay. Kind of bug-like. It depends but, what... It depends what which, like a large... It depends what area you're watching, really. Because yeah. at some point, they're just like a hose. <laughs> um, with little felt teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always been funny to me too. I, I like the like I said, I like the episode overall. Clara, I thought I, I, I'm a fan of Clara. A lot of people are not. I don't know what your problem is. If that's your personal preference, hey, fine. But I think she's great. I think she has she has annoyed me far less than Amelia Pond the last in her last twelve episodes. <laughs> because the last twelve episodes with her, I could have. Uh, that, that was enough of that. I, I honestly did not find them scary. And I saw a lot of it coming. When she goes to hit the one in the back of the head and there's no body attached, I knew... The minute I saw her approaching, I like the body's not hooked to it. It's mm-hmm. just the head. There were a lot of things I saw coming. I, I, apparently, these Cybermen, though, must run on Windows Vista because there were constant upgrades being done. Mm-hmm. And like we talked about before, it was too much. It was overdone. You You cannot possibly upgrade your firmware and software with air quotes there Mm -hmm. to um prevent electrocution and you know modify the armor material i mean unless they're made out of nanobots which they never say they are Mm -hmm. there's no way they would be able to alter half the stuff they you know yeah yeah that was my problem i was kind of going like now I mean, it made him creepier. That it's an enemy that, as soon as you find a weakness, they can fix. But I wasn't sure how they were doing that. No, I was like, I could see them doing it in the new ones being built in a factory. Uh, I, you know, it's I find it funny they were the only. You know, I I thought thought it was so hokey that the only way to defeat them was to blow up a planet or implode a planet. When, like I said, in in the fit in the five doctors. There was a the ultimate stealth killing machine was shooting them with arrows and the thing died, you know. Well, they've uh, upgraded since then. Uh, <laughs> they fixed the weakness. It to was arrows. neat at first, but 
half the stuff that they say they had to upgrade would have had to have been done physically. Mm-hmm. And you couldn't just be like, doo, 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 doo. oh, there you go, you're immune. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. Well, yeah. That... Part of I enjoyed so many parts of it. And again, it was like Crimson Horror. There were a lot of parts of it I enjoyed. As a whole, I can't say it was great. I mean, I don't blame Gaiman for that. I don't really blame Moffat or the directors or editors for that. I mean, it's just you have to work in the time you have. Mm-hmm. And I think that may have been part of the problem. I, I do blame them to the extent that I think the kids kind of ruined it for me. Just because <laughs> knowing the la- how the last episode ended, knowing those kids were going to be in it, just irritated me from the beginning. thought the effect was cool when that one was moving at super like sonic speeds. Mm-hmm. I also thought it was completely implausible and just not, not right. And then, no, no, I, the, then none of them did I it again. My, my, uh, yeah, I was okay I with it. My belief for that. I was okay with it if I, I had okay seen the other ones do that, it. But, but yeah, none of them ever right, did it again. You're right. I didn't think of that. They they could have, unless they didn't have the special upgrade yet that allows you to but move just the, it. Just the fact that you, they they make it seem like the Cybermen are so deadly that we destroyed a galaxy. You have mm-hmm. to implode a planet. You don't even have to, you don't even have to do that when you're fighting Daleks. I mean, you could. It'd probably be a lot easier. Every Everything has a weak point. You know, and they made the Cybermen too invincible, in my opinion. It, it, it took it too... It took, it, it took it a little too far. You know, the, upgrade, the constant upgrade thing is what did it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the little cyber insect flying around at the end was... They imploded the planet. How did it get off? Wouldn't that mean that it all goes in and then gets annihilated? And then they scanned for cyber technology and didn't find it. So, I mean, it was a small enough thing, though. I can understand that. Well, they're not going to... Kill the Cybermen off completely. I mean, overall, it was it was good. It was... Again, even as an episode that I didn't think was great, it was better to me than most of Series 7A. Mm-hmm. And it was better than most of Series 6. Yeah, I, I said I liked it. I just... Yeah, but I, I mean, I agree I, that it was... It's enjoyable. I To be honest, the, the only episode... The only Cybermen episode... I voluntarily watched, there's only two, Tomb of the Cybermen and Earthshock. Those are the only two that I will actually go out of my way to put on. Excellent. Okay. And this one, to me, it's a close third, but I don't think I would really go out of my way to, like, what? The stakes in this one didn't seem to be as high as, like, like, you didn't feel that tension, like, oh, my God, if they get off the planet. You didn't, there was no, I mean, it was talked about, but there was no, like, nothing in this episode made you go, oh, this is the end of humanity. Well, the end, <laughs> the end was awfully easy. That it was like, okay. Well, this one little bomb is going to implode the entire planet. We're done. But but we're gone. We can, we have time to rescue the TARDIS. Everything's okay. It it did feel As like as he says the coordinates and he goes to the girl, the woman working it. You got that? Yeah. The proposal to, to Clara at the end was neat. <laughs> yeah, that was that yes. was cute. I felt bad for him, but that was. Cute. I think he understood. I would like to see him come back. I'd like to see his <laughs> character used again. Yes. I, I would. I think I think that, like I said, there was a lot of parts of it I liked. Mm-hmm. Well, he's right, the emperor. I hate to do this to you guys, but I have to finish packing for the weekend. Okay. Well, we're pretty much done anyway, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that's cool. You have a good weekend. You too. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> like, what am I going to do? <laughs> All of you. But, all right. Have a good one. You too. Sorry okay. to get destroyed. Yeah, but I guess that's really it. I mean... Yeah, I said. But I will say though, I think I like the Cybermen a little more than you do, but because I, I, I like the old Cybermen episodes. I do too. Like I, I said, the I only like two, I, the only two I go out of my way to watch really are, are you know, two of the old ones. I, but I, yeah, I didn't like them in the new series, but I like the. I did like was it old what, what was the Tom Baker one where they're on the space station? The space station that's in like six episodes, <laughs> throughout different points in time. They're on there, right? At one point, yeah. I, yeah. yeah, because the Cybermans are on there, and Sarah Jane gets attacked by one. I just watched yeah. the two. Can't think of the name, but that one was good. A lot of those were good, but but I guess that's our views on it. Joanna liked it. Mm-hmm. I thought it was okay. Yeah, I said I I liked it. I didn't, but I I said I will admit my expectations were rather high. What I've noticed with this series is that I watched Spells of St. John's, and I was like, eh, it's okay. I watched it again when Joanna watched them, and I was like, you know what? This episode's actually not bad. 
Mm-hmm. I actually enjoyed it a lot more the second time. Uh, Cold War, still great. Mm-hmm. What was the second episode? Bells of Akatan. Rings of Akatan. Rings of Akatan. Yeah, Akatan. sorry. Bell, Bells of St. John and Ring. <laughs> I'd rather be watching Bells of yeah. St. John. So uh, I... That episode got worse the second mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Cold War, and then the fourth one was... Hyde. Hyde, which was good both... Oh, she didn't watch it yet. But I watched it again, and Hyde was Hyde still is good to me, except for the monster story. Mm-hmm. And then um, Crimson Horror Journey to the Center of the Tardis too. Journey, I still just like the ride. And then uh, Crimson Horror. God, I bet, if, I bet you if it wasn't for that ending with the kids, I would have liked mm-hmm. it. I enjoyed lots of parts of it. I love the, the stereoscope effect or whatever it was when they went back and showed mm-hmm. the flashbacks. I love Jenny's character in it. I mean, there's a lot. There was a lot to like in that episode. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, really, there's only been one really weak one, and I, I really hate saying it. This would be my other one right above that one. <laughs> I this one, I don't know if I even say. I think this one would be better than Journey, in my book, still. So maybe it's well, we the, know how I felt about Journey. Yeah, so it's definitely higher than that. Yeah, well, Journey wasn't Curse of the Black Spot, so at least. You know, <laughs> Uh, I would put it higher than Journey, probably by a little bit. Journey, I, I liked because it was in the TARDIS and it was falling apart, and you know, it was I just didn't like the end with the reset button. I, I don't like mm-hmm. that. So the actual literal reset button. <laughs> yeah, at least they played it up and they were honest this time. They weren't just like, "Well, if we reset the space time continuum, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, we're just <laughs> we're just going to give you an your, actual reset button. An actual reset button. Mm-hmm. So. But I, I guess that's it for me. I mean, yep. that, w- that was episode 12. No, 11. 12? 12. 12, I think. 12 of Two Girls, a Guy, and a TARDIS. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for all your support. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, actually, at Two Girls, a Guy, and a TARDIS. I think it's the number two girls, one guy, one TARDIS, something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Zoom Marketplace. You can find us on... Twitter, you can find us in a lot of places. And if but you're listening to this, then you found you us found somewhere. found a podcast, apparently. <laughs> so uh, thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you after the finale. Ooh. Yeah, so that'll be an interesting one. Good night. <laughs>